Hello and welcome to another IELTS Learning Tips video. My name's Bernie Wall and I'm an IELTS teacher and trainer and I specialise in working with students who need bands 7 and 8 and sometimes 7 and 8 in all parts of the test um, and help them to achieve these high bands. Um, in this video today I want to look at headings I get probably more questions about reading than anything else and headings is one of the areas that I know um, I get a lot of questions about and students can sometimes have problems with. So I want to show you the method I use for headings and give you a, a little example of how this works. So I've got a presentation which I'll share with you now and then we can go through the headings. So the first thing to understand about headings is that it's what we call a global question. Now global questions are those that tackle quite a large uh, part of the text. So another type of global question would be one where you, you have to allocate a, a title to the whole text. With the headings we're looking at individual paragraphs. The main skill you need for this type of question is skimming. So it's important for you to really practice your skimming techniques so that you can very quickly skim through the, um, the heading, uh, sorry, the paragraph and find out exactly what it's telling you. So let's look at the method for doing this. So I wouldn't um, bother really looking at the headings. Uh, I would go straight to the paragraph. So go straight to the first paragraph and it's better to do it systematically, I think. And start with the first paragraph that you have to um, analyze and skim through it. And when you've skimmed through it, then ask yourself what, what it's telling you. So get an overview of what the main information is. Sometimes there might be two or three points, but usually there is one point which is more overriding than the others, and that's what you're looking for. Once you've done that, then go to the headings, but don't just look for one answer unless there's one that is quite obvious, and that does happen. But sometimes I think you'll agree that you're looking at one or two or maybe even three that might be possible. So generally what I would do is go down the list and say, that's possible, that's possible, that's possible. Put those down and then move on to the next paragraph. Okay, and this will help you to, um, to do it much faster. It also means that you won't choose the wrong heading early on. What happens if you spend a lot of time looking for the right heading for the first paragraph is that you pick that heading and then you cross it out and you don't look at it again. And if you're wrong, then the rest of them are gonna be in jeopardy as well. So it's important to keep an open mind and to consider all of them as you go through, okay. So here's an example of um, a headings exercise. It's um, a passage about tea, and you can see it's from the, a book called A Book for IELTS. There are 12 headings here, which is quite a lot, um, but, you know, there are usually quite a lot of headings to consider. So you can see just by skimming through them, they're all to do with, uh, with tea. So I've picked out three paragraphs to look at um, and I want to just look at each of those paragraphs in turn and see if we can get an overview of what they're about. So this first one, if I skim through, I can see that it mentions lots of different places in the world, China, Eastern Asia, England, Dutch. English, Dutch, Moscow, Europe, America. So there are lots of different places mentioned. There's also a mention about trading and there's a mention about um, a route from uh, Far East to Europe and that tea was traded across that route. It also mentions drinking ceremonies and tea making ceremonies. So it seems to be something historical, but also to do with 
how tea was used and how it was uh, transported to different parts of the world. So if we go back to the headings, then we can see which of those might make sense for this particular paragraph. And if I look right down the list, then I think possibly number seven, an everyday beverage in all parts of the world, that might fit. But also number eight, tea on the move, because it talks about trading tea and moving tea from one part of the world to other parts of the world. So looking at the choices, I'm going to go with those two, allocate them to that paragraph, and then go on to the next one. So that's number seven and number eight. Okay, so this second paragraph, there are more than three paragraphs obviously in this uh, text. I've only picked out three to show an example. So here we see something about coffee houses, clearly not tea, but it looks as though there's some sort of um, gender divide between the coffee houses for men and the middle class ladies at home drinking tea. So there's a gender divide between tea and coffee. The second half of the paragraph tells us something about the price of tea falling. And at that point, then the drink was taken up by poor people. So instead of it being restricted to the middle classes, by the uh, 19th century, everybody was drinking it and we're also told that there were different grades and blends at different prices. So if we go back again to the headings and let's see what might work there. Number one is possible, diverse drinking methods because we, it talks about tea parties and coffee and number one is not just about tea, it's just about drinking. And then if we skim down again, we can see that possibly number 10, because there's a mention of a price drop, and perhaps even number 11, the value, because there's something about a class divide. So it's quite possible that uh, that may also be a suitable heading. So we have three. We have number one, number 10, and number 11. And I'm satisfied with that. And now I'm going to look at the third paragraph. So here we have mention of Africa and two particular countries, Senegal and the Gambia. We also have a mention of Arab traders who were bringing the tea drinking culture to Western Africa. So tea is again moving around. Um, and there's some mention of um, methods of drinking. So we have some detail at the end about young men, and it's fashionable for them, to drink this Chinese gunpowder tea. And it tells us how it's made. It's boiled with a lot of sugar for a long time. And it's a kind of tradition or a fashion among some of these um, African men. So if we go back again to the headings, then let's see. So immediately, tea drinking in Africa jumps out, number 12. As does African tea, which is number nine. And also maybe tea on the move, because we had a lot of information about the traders and we had different parts of Africa mentioned. So I think number eight might also be a possibility. So I'm going to choose those three and then ordinarily I would move on. But here we're just looking at three paragraphs. So just to recap, paragraph A tells us about things being tea being traded in several regions and we picked two headings for that and in the second paragraph we learn about tea drinking among high class middle class women and then later we find that it became universal after a price drop so we've got headings 1 10 and 11 and in the final um paragraph we looked at, we know that tea is moving around this tradition because there were lots of Arab traders taking the tradition to different parts of Africa.
And then we learn something about some tea drinking habits in, in two particular countries in Africa. So I've chosen as possibilities number eight, number nine, and number 12. So now we need to sort these out. Um, in the real um, reading, I would finish all of the passages before I start to sort them out. And you'd find that some of these headings would go with different paragraphs. So at the end of the section, it's likely that you would only have maybe one or two paragraphs where you still have a choice. So they do get allocated. So don't worry that when you go back, you're going to have to look at them again. It's, it's unlikely you'll have more than two paragraphs with, um, with a choice. Okay, so we have a clash because heading eight was chosen for both A and C. And that's fine. Don't worry about it. Now look and see which one is going to be the better choice for each paragraph. Now, A doesn't say anything much about everyday drink. It talks more about the ceremonial use of drink. Um, and we find out that lots of different countries adopted tea and tea was spread over different parts of the world. So it seems that heading eight probably fits better for paragraph A than it does for paragraph C. And then when we look at C, that then leaves us just with 9 and 12. Now, African tea would suggest that the tea originates in Africa. But it doesn't actually say in the paragraph that the tea originates in Africa. It just says that it was brought there. And we indeed, we know that the tea that the, uh, the, the young men were drinking was from China because it's called Chinese gunpowder tea. So therefore, um, a better choice for paragraph C would be 12, because it tells us how the tea is drunk in Africa. Okay, so we've allocated those two, and now we need to look at paragraph B. So here we have four main pieces of information, that drinking tea moves from the middle classes to the lower classes, and that that was a result of a fall in price. And that seems to be more important in the paragraph than the fact that there was a bit of a gender divide. That is only really mentioned in the first sentence and first sentence and a half. So this seems to be a more important piece of information. And that would fit better with paragraph, with uh, heading number 10. It is about price. It's not really about value. So number 11 is less good. And although there is a mention of diverse drinking habits between the coffee and the tea, it doesn't give us a lot of information about that. So I think at this point we can also reject heading one. So now by process of elimination, we have number 10 as the best choice for paragraph B. Now, this may seem to you a little bit convoluted, but actually, if you practice it a lot, it means that you're, you're going to be far more accurate on your headings and it will be faster. You'll be able to get through the paragraphs a lot more quickly. And then at the end, you may have a bit of a deliberation over one or two paragraphs as to which of the choices is the best but most of them will be allocated one-on-one. -on -one. So speed is the key because it's a lot to do to skim all the paragraphs. So by allocating lots, any heading that is possible, you can go through the headings far more quickly. Obviously some will be clear. And when you look at a heading, you can see immediately which which heading uh, fits the paragraph, and that's fine. It's for the ones where it's not so clear that it's better just to allocate two or three. It also means, and this is really important, that you don't lock down the wrong answers at the beginning of the exercise. And this is often the case with students who spend a long time allocating one paragraph to each and spend you know several minutes on each paragraph and then choose the wrong answer 
cross it out and don't look at it again. That's a very dangerous thing to do. So by keeping an open mind, it means that you don't have this problem of locking down wrong answers. And secondly, and this is also quite important, by keeping your options open, you look more carefully at the information. Because when you come back to the two paragraphs that you might have a choice for, you're looking again and you're considering the main information better. And that means that you're less likely to choose the wrong answer. And you can come back later at the end of all the headings, you can come back later at the end of the passage, and you can even come back at the end of the whole test. So there's plenty of time to get this right. There's no need to waste time deliberating over one paragraph and one heading. Okay, so I hope that was useful. Um, I would urge you to use this method because if you practice it a lot, it will certainly save you a lot of time. So thank you for um, watching this video. If you go to my website, um, you'll find more information about headings there in the article that I wrote to accompany this. And um, the article gives a little bit more detail, so it will be useful. And you'll also find some other free resources there to help you with your IELTS. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.